homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, it's uh, 610. The sun's not going to be up for another hour. Uh, it's daylight enough, and it's time to harvest corn. Now, how do you know when it's time to harvest your corn? Well, the corn silks. begin to look like this. Now this ear is not going to be good and full. I can feel it, but it's done all it's going to do. See, there's the corn. Uh, it could be better. Uh, there's lots of ears like this. This is a second ear. And uh, second ears are, uh, I'll get it out here. Second ears are not nearly as good as first ears. Mm. It's still really awesome. This candy corn. It's so sweet before it even sets the the starches by cooking it. Oh, best stuff in the world. Now, I'm going to get out harvesting this corn. Crystal can't uh, help me today. She's got some other irons in the fire. So, I'm going to get it harvesting the corn. And I was looking, it's also time to harvest the beans. So these white half runners are ready and uh, they look fairly pretty this year. So I can harvest a few for eating and then the rest for seed saving. If you want to know how to save the seeds, stay tuned, subscribe. I'll show you how to save seeds for just about everything you grow. All right, let's get at this corn. Now, what I'll do is I'll harvest the corn each each thing. I'll harvest it, put it in a five gallon bucket, and then dump it in my tractor bucket. And when I get about 20, 20 dozen, I'll have a full tractor bucket. So, time to get at that. Now, one thing about candy corn is that it generally puts on two ears per stalk. One ear is a lot smaller. If you'll wait and harvest that second ear a week from today, it'll fill out pretty good too. But I'll be lucky to do that because the raccoons have found my field. So I gotta get this harvested and get out of the field. They don't share. Here's what I'm talking about, about the little ears. Ow. See here? Here's one of the smaller ears. There's one where I've already harvested. See, I harvested an ear right here, but right here's another ear. Okay, it will come on. And so that's the way you get at that. So I'm gonna get at it.
Now when you get in your field, uh, you're going to find corn stalks that are rowed down like this. See over there? I don't know if you can see. But what you find is this. See they ride the corn stalks down, then they pull the ears off and sit and eat them right here. So that's what uh, raccoon damage looks like. If we look over here on this side, I got the same thing going on. There's quite a bit more raccoon damage than what I thought, so it's a good thing I'm getting in here and harvesting these. I'll harvest them, and then I'll show you how many I got. Okay, here's my harvest. I didn't get as full a bucket. Generally, the bucket is totally full. Uh, I don't know what it is this year. Uh, it just may just be a bad corn year. Uh, I didn't have that much raccoon damage to have made this be uh, this light. Uh, I will, I generally, I harvest and get the biggest, fullest ears as I go through. And then, in about a week, I come back and I harvest the others who have time to fill up. And generally, whatever I get in the bucket this time is what I get in the bucket the next time. So, Time to get up and get these processed. I think I got uh, only got 15 dozen. So let's go process these and I'll show you how. Okay, I've got uh, everything set up. I've got me a chair to sit in. Uh, that helps my back. My back's killing me. Uh, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to take all of this in the house with you. Okay, it's just it's just gonna be a mess. Now we do not spray our corn. Okay, never, 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 never. We don't spray our corn. So when I get in here, there's probably gonna be bugs. Let me pull this back here and show you what I'm talking about. Yep, fell out. Broke it back there. Real good demonstration. Come here. Being tough this year. Now, I pull this stuff off. Pull as much of the uh, silks as I can off. Then, just throw that down on the ground. Then, right here, see where the worm was? There was a worm right here eating this corn. You just break it off and throw that part down. The chickens will love it. And then I silk off as much of the silk as I can out here. Because that saves me a lot of work in the house. And now I just drop that in the bucket. Okay, that's what I'm going to be doing for 15 dozen. Well, they're breaking on me. What's the deal? I hate it when I break them back there. Because there's a lot of corn right there. Okay. Y'all fire worm. The ears aren't as pretty as they used usually are. They're not as big and they're not as full. I don't know what that's about this year, but you have those years, you know? Uh, I've been doing this gardening for a long time, and some years are good years for corn. Like this year was a great year for onions. I mean, an awesome year for onions. Go back and look at our harvesting onions video. Oh, I got the biggest onions I ever got from planting onion sets before. And my big onions, they banged it too, so 
be certain to go back and look at that video. But the corn this year, I did the, remember we did that experiment with the buy, buy delicious corn? Well, it didn't do good at all. I got maybe two dozen ears and they were little tiny things, not much bigger than that. So, I was real disappointed with the Bialicious corn. But the beans are banging it this year too. The, uh, the white, or the uh, greasy beans I planted in the corn, oh, they've run to the top of that little Bialicious corn and uh, they're hanging in wads everywhere over it. So I'll get all kinds of bean seed back this year. So I'm tickled with that, but the corn's just not having a good year. Even my candy corn, which almost always is a good year. Now see, this is what the what the cobs almost always look like. There's my hand. That's about an eight inch cob with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen rows. Okay, 14 rows of kernels. Okay, I will get at this, and then when I get it all done, I'll show you what we've got in corn, and then we'll meet back in the kitchen. Okay, there's the pile of shucks. And then here's the corn. I got a full five gallon bucket and two full, well almost full, uh, two and a half gallon buckets. So let's get this in the house and get started processing it. And then I got to come out and clean this up. I'll probably do that this evening. Got it done just in time. Okay, here's the first step of the process. We've got to get rid of all these silks. Now, Crystal normally does this part. Okay? I'm going to miss her today because I'm going to have to do it. Well, I am not as adept at this as she is. But, I've got 15 dozen. It's about 180. 180 ears of corn that's got to be silked. Oh, miss some. And you know how to do that? You just sit here and do it. Some of them will silk real quick and some of them will take a long time. This one didn't have but two or three silks on it. This one's pretty hairy. And sometimes if I'm having a hard time with the silks I will use one of these little scrubby pads. But now this one's dirty. I won't use it on my clean corn. Uh, But I've got some here under the sink ready to use. So, okay, I will keep doing this and get these ready and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, all my bowls are full. I've still got some corn that I've got to, got to get the silks off of. Uh, I'm not perfect on getting these silks off. I'm not as good as Crystal is, but I've done, I done, I think, a fair job. Now, the way I've got this set up, this is a dining room table chair. That I put some uh, towels over, some dish towels. The reason is cutting corn is nasty. It'll fly places. Now I've got one of those things that you just push over the cob and push it down. It does the whole cob at once. I found that those things just are not too good. So what I do is before I start it, I sharpen this knife. And uh, it's sharp enough to shave you. And I get a piece of corn. I 
start cutting. There's some milk in there, and some people do what they call milking it, but I don't worry about that. That cob's done, ready to go to the chickens. And it's time for the next one. Now this corn this year, it just wasn't as pretty as it's been in years past. I don't know if it's the year or or if I didn't put down enough fertilizer or I don't know. It's just the way it is this year. And no, I've I've planted corn this way now for a couple of years, so it's not the planting method, it's just the year. It happens that way. I also had to pay a coon tax this year. Uh, the raccoons did their thing and but now I usually get on this first harvest I usually get out of those two doubled rows I usually get somewhere around 20 dozen on the first harvest and then I get around 20 dozen on the second harvest generally the second harvest is not as big as the first harvest because the ears are smaller they're more like that instead of like that they're not as fat so but this is just what it is and now this corn will fly places so around this I know I'll have to uh, I'll have to uh, mop when I get done uh, I miss crystal but you know that's what's gonna have to happen it was one of those things that today's the only day I had that I could I could do it and she couldn't so it's getting done. So I'll get the rest of this corn cut off and then I'll show you the next step of the process. Okay, I'm about a third of the way done. Uh, but I've got enough that my hands are hurting and my back's hurting from cutting this corn off. So I'm going to take a little break from that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start frying our first uh, set. Uh, I've got the biggest skillet that we have. And Mom and Pa, they uh, used to do theirs outside. On a wash, on a wash stove with a dish pan. That's how they fried their corn. But Crystal and I found that this skillet is plenty big enough for what we put up. Uh, they put up a wash tub full. Uh, we don't put up that much corn. So all you want is you got a whole stick of unsalted butter. Now you could use salted butter because I'm going to add salt to this. Okay. But for a skillet worth, you want a whole stick of butter. Now, we're going to get this in the skillet. Skillet's about two thirds full. Set this over out of the way. Then you'll want to cover it with a lid. Here's the skillet. You'll want to cover it with a lid and put it over here on medium high heat. And then ever so often stir it. And when the corn changes color and starts to get brown looking in places, then it's time to take it off the heat. I started off on high just to get it started. So, after this is cooked, I'll come back to you and show you what it looks like. Okay, have a look. See the brown bits that are in that corner?
corn here and there. That corn's done. So now all I want to do is get that in a bowl so it can cool. So I've added a little salt. You can add salt to your taste. I've added salt to ours. So, okay. I'll show you how much we get in the end. This is the first batch. All right, got them all done. I wound up with, and if you don't pay attention, you don't notice that this is so much work. Okay, a lot of people come to this uh, gardening and homestead and stuff, and they think that there's not that much work to it. Hey, gardening has a pretty extreme learning curve. So, how do we come out? Well, fried corn, uh, full quart bags, I got two of them, and then half quart bags, I've got four of those. So, in other words, here's Thanksgiving, Christmas, and then I've got four individual meals where we've got a side of fried corn. Uh, that was 15 dozen. Uh, I counted them. It was actually 14 dozen and nine ears. Okay? 14 dozen and nine ears. So, yeah. That seems like a whole a lot of nothing, doesn't it? Well, I started this morning at 6 a.m. in the field. Uh, it took me two and a half hours, two hours and 15 minutes to harvest the corn and then shuck it, then bring it in. Then when I got in here, I took about a half hour break to let my back calm down a little bit. And so I took a half hour break and that made it about 10 o'clock when I started in here. And when we just got done, the last of the corn was cool. Part of this was sitting. Uh, the last of the corn was cool. It's four, 10 minutes after four. So 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, four. Six hours and two and a half hours is eight and a half hours to do this corn. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but we love it. Now, if you like this stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homesteading stuff every week, sometimes one, sometimes five videos. Just depends on how much is going on in the homestead that week. Uh, if you hit the little bell when you come to the channel, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Now, it's time for me to get this in the freezer and get on to the next thing.